the um, long wrong ways, Ganji. <laughs> Uh, last we left off, um, let's see, just so we can look over here, um, we managed to, um, procure, or Tristan managed to procure a permit from a guard who, uh, basically took it away from this weapons merchant who looked suspicious and he was, when he was gathering, um, the thugs the um, low lives weapons from the ground and um, now he's gonna go on his way in uh, so before we do that um, what it occurred to me was that I'm not sure if I explained like the way you get XP in this game so uh, you know one of the ways you get XP in this game is by basically following, um, what you call it, your major dharma. Well, yeah, your major dharma, dharma and your minor dharma. Whenever you do the positive triggers, you get XP. Whenever you do the negative triggers, you, do, you get XP and Zui, which is um, a meta currency for GMs to use against you and screw you over. But you earned it. <laughs> and another kind of dharma, it's... Uh, prophecies um, like a single sentence you know, telling you that something must happen like devil cursed mountain must be cleansed of evil spirits or the leader of iron snake sect must be killed in martial conquest and they're given different um, mind um, Tristan has been doing he's been doing stuff to accomplish a goal and so it seems like it kind of would make sense to set a prophecy for him so maybe let's see um, prophecy uh, let's okay prophecy uh, the settlers of the Wasteland um, must find their way or must gain residence <laughs> in the town of Nirvana. Okay, so Bam, there's a prophecy right there. Because, you know, it's what Tristan has been saying that he would do, even if um, he was insincere about it. You know, it, it kind of would make sense for Dharma to... That Dharma has placed Tristan in their path for that sort of thing. Even though he's like, like a reluctant hero. So, seeing here, so an easy... Accomplishing a task within the realm of an unskilled mortal, enduring a non-lethal danger. Um, let's see. I, if anything, I could say that you know, protecting the um, like the settlers from the lowlifes was like an easy prophecy. But you know, just for the sake of like shit that matters. I'm going to kind of stick away from the easy prophecies for now, unless they become, like, really relevant. The one that's relevant right now is the, um, getting the settlers of the wasteland into Nirvana. Okay, challenging. Um, examples. Overcoming a foe of first to third degree. Accomplishing a task within the realm of a skilled and capable mortal. Um, enduring a danger which risks life and limb. Uh, so that seems to make sense with regards to um, the difficulty of this prophecy. So
not heroic, challenging difficulty worth seven karma. Okay. Yeah, and once you accumulate uh, enough karma, um, now it's not simply, oh, I have the karma, you know, I have the sufficient amount of karma, therefore, bam, I learned this technique. No, you have to go out and either find like a master who knows that technique or find a scroll where you can learn that technique from and then spend the sufficient amount of karma. You can do these things beforehand, but until you go through, I guess, the life experience that destiny has set out for you, you're not going to learn it. And it's in the learning of these techniques that um, you get stronger. Let me show you. Advancement. See here it has... Um, yeah, cost of mastery, let's see, blah, blah, blah. Jeez, goop call is kind of expensive. Okay. Um, yeah, cost of mastery, novice, expert. Yeah, the techniques are called Yudhakala, and then Gupkala are shadow arts. That I'll explain some other time, since I don't have any Gupkala. So... Here it shows you, like, I'm first degree, or rather, Tristan's first degree, and so he knows three novice techniques and one expert technique. Now, in order for Tristan to go to the um, second degree, give me one moment here. In order for Tristan to go to the second degree, as you can see here, he needs to learn another novice technique. So, you know, that's going to cost him 14 karma. So we need to get karma first, and then we need to find another novice technique to learn. And what I find kind of strange, really, more likely than not you will start off as part of a clan and it tells you you have three novice level techniques but and then each clan has its own martial arts style now there are only three novice level techniques per style so in a sense the first novice level technique you have to learn outside of your style maybe that's intentional maybe not uh, or you, you know, <laughs> and then you see here, you know, as your degree, cunning hero, his effort pool will go up by one, he will gain another focus slot, which is sweet, and then his aura will go from five to ten, which is also sweet, because aura is very valuable. All right. So of uh, the guard who confiscated the, um, what you call it, who confiscated the shit out of the weapons merchant, and um, now he's going in. Uh, hmm. Or is he? So what I'm going to do here is for the start of this scene I'm gonna try something different instead of like rolling chaos or whatever um, I'm gonna pull a card from the story forge cards and see um, like what shows up so bam I draw it adversity perfect perfect okay uh, story forge card draw Adversity. Okay, um, someone just can't get a break. The world, 
The world is a vampire. Doom, 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 doom. Uh, I forgot the rest of the fucking lyrics. <laughs> or its people seem to be determined to provide nothing but resistance. Okay, this is pretty obvious. So, upon seeing this, um, Captain Vorax is like, No, 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 no! You incompetent fool! Get back, you know, go back to the barracks. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about this later. You, and he point, he basically, not only does he point his shotgun at Tristan's chest, like, he, like, thumbs him with it, so to speak. Like, he nudges his chest with the shotgun barrel. Arrest this man! And he's like, what? what? What do you mean? It's like, you and your tricksy martial arts ways, you're nothing but trouble. You know, and <laughs> Tristan looks back, you know, like really confused. And um, he's not sure exactly uh, what to do. Uh, because if he's basically... <laughs> He's just going to get as well. Like, does he resist or whatnot? He's like, where are you taking me? Uh, we're taking you to uh, to the jail cells. He's like, to the jail cells? What for? Uh, you're causing, like, way too much trouble out here. Now come quietly or else. Hmm. He's being threatened... Uh, what does his burning soul tell him? Let's see. Challenging foes more powerful than yourself. Uh, placing yourself in tremendous danger by refusing to back down or retreat. And accepting the challenge deemed impossible or suicidal. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, so he doesn't know how powerful Captain Vorax is. He is, you know, giving a lot of, or yeah, he is giving him a lot of grief for being a martial artist. So it's kind of safe to assume that he's not himself a martial artist, and therefore is weaker than Tristan. So, um, let's see. So he's not challenging a foe more powerful than himself. Um, would he be placing himself in tremendous danger by refusing to back down or retreat? This He would kind of be refusing to back down if he fought back, but placing himself in tremendous danger. I'm not sure if this qualifies him as tremendous danger, but it will make things a lot harder for him. And accepting... A challenge, excuse me, deemed impossible or suicidal. <sighs> okay, so Tristan will ask, okay, so if I go to, you know, if I agree to go to the jail cell with you, because I can always leave, he just tells him flat out, you know, like he's totally confident that, you know, he can evade, like, their pursuit if need be. Um, so if I go to the jail cell, how long will I be there, and under what conditions will I be able to, well, yeah, how long will I be incarcerated, under what conditions can I be free? Um... You know, it seems like a reasonable thing to ask that the captain is not gonna like hold back, so no skill role is needed. And the, the captain tells him, "Well, you're gonna be, you're gonna be there a, a little while. You know, like if you really want to get in so bad, you know, you're not gonna do it through, um, through manipulating my simple-minded." 
guards over here. And they, they're kind of grumbling to each other and whatnot. You're going to have to earn your way in. He's like, earn my way in? How? Well, we'll see how you do in the Hippodrome. Like, Hippodrome, Hippodrome. Um, is that like an arena? Like, yes, it's exactly like an arena. Ooh, a challenge. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, lead the way. And, um, Tristan, uh, he gets escorted to the jail cell. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, jot that down. Okay, so seeing the guard just hand Tristan a pass, a permit that he confiscated. Okay, uh, Captain Vorax set out to correct this nonsense. And is a and arrests our protagonists. And attempts to arrest him. <laughs> uh, Tristan asks, considers that he can just flee or decimate these guards, but that would go against his major dharma for just being like very in-game technical here. So he asks the captain what the conditions of his incarceration are. The captain informs him that if he wants passage into Nirvana, he must earn it by fighting in the Hippodrome. Lighting up with anticipation and glee, Tristan voluntarily uh, submits himself to imprisonment. <laughs> some bits. Yeah, there's gonna be some bits when he takes care of these fucking people. <laughs> for the promise of challenging mighty foes. Hmm. I see, I sense another prophecy going on here. So, uh, let's see. Copy pass to this. Okay. Um, emerge victorious in the hippodrome to be free from incarceration and Okay. Scene six. All right. Prophecy.
you know what, the, the prophecy is essentially like another story thread. So I shall copy past to this, into that, italicize it, Boop. find Sabine, supplier. You know what, all of these actually, they can kind of be prophecies, so to speak. Worth three karma. I don't see why not. This, hmm. Sheets. Heroic or terrible difficulty. Or twenty one karma. Um, challenging. This is not bulleted. All right. So, um, yeah. Uh, Tristan gets arrested. And um, now he's in the jail cell. I assume they put cuffs on him. You know that makes sense, and it's like big old iron clampers. You know, just kukush. You know, it's not like two handcuffs and a chain, or even like those fucking bracers with a thick chain. No, it's like a rectangular piece of metal with two holes. You know, it opens up kind of like a, a stapler or some shit, and then boom, you put your wrist there, and then closes shut. Um, uh, so, yeah, they leave him there, and, um, let's see. So, I think it'll also make sense that as Tristan is going to jail, he happens, or as he's being escorted to his cell, he passes by, um, the imprisoned weapons merchant. And, um, <laughs> looks at him and he goes, Ha! You got yourself in prison, huh, you stupid son of a bitch? And Kristen looks at me and he goes, Excuse me? And he <laughs> says, like, Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was a mistake. Like, yeah. You know, repeat it again, it'll be your last. And he's just, like, shaking in his shit. So, um, yeah. He's in his cell. And, um... Let's pull up another Story Forge card to see, like, what happens before the fights begin. Relapse. Forces or patterns that were thought to be left um, behind rise anew, stronger than ever. Hold on, hold on.
All right, what could this mean? Uh, relapse, forces and patterns that were thought to be left behind rise anew. Uh, so, let's see, patterns that were thought to be left behind. Ah, uh, yes. Um, the disregarding honor and basically like good behavior. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout all that, uh, Tristan, he makes an attempt to basically swipe the key off of a guard. All right, so that's going to be an agility action. And he, um, he's got mastering agility, so whatever result he gets, plus one rank. So that's going to be five dice. Shake, shake, shake. Boom. Okay, we've got a three. We've got a four. Oof, we got two sevens. And an eight. Let's see what we can accomplish here. Oh, da -da -da. Any other things for like not so much traversing acrobatics and parkour treacherousness? What the hell? Hmm. Maybe senses. Okay, I think senses would make more sense because it requires physical subtlety. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Hide or sneak, detect anything using five senses, gather details about your environment. Notice, you got to cover, hide. Okay, so hide in a particularly, in a partially concealed spot, such as within, let me check the agility again. Let's see what it says. for dynamic movement. Yeah, I think senses would make more sense. Notice well hidden or extremely subtle details. You uncover spies, false identity. Okay, that's observation. Uh, that's hiding. Uh, yeah. I mean, power doesn't make sense. Uh, endurance doesn't make sense. Intellect, let's check intellect. Intuit or engineer complex ideas. Solve a logical problem, recall information. No, nope. okay. So, senses. Yeah, senses just makes the most sense. That was unintentional. Okay, so, um, yeah, he's going to use the two sevens. And, um, boom, he swipes the key off of the guard's belt or whatever. And I'm not sure he really noticed. Um, also, another thing I've been wondering is... Uh, with regards to like opposed actions, so to speak, because normally in these kinds of games, um, you know, when you do something against another person, you know, like favory versus perception or whatever. But with the guards, I'm not sure. And if anything, these guards are like one, one dice characters, so they're still screwed. <coughs> okay, so. Once he's like inside, and you know, sees nobody's around, boom, takes off the um, the manacles, so to speak, or whatever the hell that shit's called. If you can tell me what that's called, I would greatly appreciate it. And um, 
Hmm. Uh, he just uh, starts meditating, <laughs> I guess, or or he's just waiting, you know, until he gets called up, and um, that happens, and you know, like, the guards are like leading him towards uh, what you call it, towards the door that leads to the um, the main fighting area in the hippodrome. So let's see here, and he also manages to pocket the key. So um, Kristen swipes the key off of the guard completely unnoticed and pockets the key. He is then, after some time passes, He is then escorted into the hippodrome. <clears throat> you know, since some time passed and he's not doing anything since he's resting, uh, he recovers his spent aura and is now at five aura. All right, so the door is open, and he is greeted by cheering and whatnot. <sighs> and he's looking around, and um, he notices, you know, it's an open area, Hippodrome. Um, let's see. It's probably like 10 rows of, like 10 rows, so to speak. Just people all around. And um, there's this badass looking lady uh, she's got like this wicked looking um, megaphone that has um, it's as if there was like a dragon claw holding um, where the talons are over like the wide part of the megaphone and she goes greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the hippodrome it looks like we have new contestants here <coughs> One of them who claims himself to be a martial artist. Let's see how he does against Nirvana's most wanted. <sighs> and other doors are opening. And there's, um, which we'll call it. Uh, we will say there's like seven more just like prisoners, you know. They all look like the scum of the earth or, or whatnot, but none of them looks particularly tough. So, um, upon entering the hippodrome, the announcer announces <laughs> an eight man free for all. The um, last survivor will be, uh, let's see, rewarded by going to the second round of Hippodrome combat. All right, so we got ourselves a fight, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm going to do here is uh, get the round structure. Round one. Okay, round begins. Tristan and the, uh, what you call it? Prisoners with being the last man standing. The intention of the 
That one has imbalances. Hmm. Hold on a second. What's up with this? Actually, three is not roll effort. Three is roll initiative. A 1d10 roll. Ignore that. Kristen has, let me, this is important here, has um, two recovery and ten prana. <coughs> so what I'm going to do here. Heaven and Earth Romance. Okay. So, there I have, uh, what call it? I have my techniques up. So, this one, this one, this one, and Grass Heading Attack. So, I want to flex some martial arts muscle here. They're trying to be the last man standing. Imbalance decision, no one has imbalances. Um, three, roll initiative. Okay, so uh, blue will be Tristan, orange will be the prisoners. And they're kind of fighting. Oh, here's the thing. Um, unlike the last fight, where it was the low lives on one side and Tristan on the other side. In this case, it's um, what you call it? It's everybody for themselves, so there's not going to be like a joint pool, so to speak. All right, so Tristan rolls a sixteen or a six, and Tristan rolls a six. And the prisoners roll a zero. Tristan goes first. Okay, roll effort. Uh, hmm. Let's see. If Tristan rolls five d six. Or probably be 10 rather. Okay, he gets a 0, a 1, two fives, and a 9. 0, comma, 1, comma, 5, comma, 5, comma, 9. The other 7. Prisoners roll one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, 
Yep, and I managed to get seven distinct dice. Cool. Put them in order. Two, three, three, five, seven, seven. Okay, there's no team ups here, so I'm not arranging them. I'm not arranging sets. Okay. Zero, two, three, three, five, seven, seven. All right, initiative bid. Uh, no one's bidding. Because <laughs> no one really can bid. Each of these people is an individual, is like an individual one die character. Turns. Okay, Tristan goes first. Um, another thing that, um, what you call it? I forgot to mention were weapons. So. Oh boy. Okay, so weapons. Um, the advantage offered by weapon can, can be accessed free once per round. Uh, having a weapon basically it provides you an, an advantage. You know, and it's an advantage that you can use once per round freely. If you want to use it again or in a different manner, then it costs prana. And bare hands are included as a weapon. So Bare hands, unarmed. The ancestor of all weapons, root of all forms of combat. Strike with fists, feet, elbows, even the forehead. The most fundamental weapons, able to attack freely and often in a flurry of blows. Fighting without other forms of weaponry grants you the ability to attack with a set of one, of rank one twice per turn. For four prana, you may attack with a single die an additional time. So, Tristan is fighting unarmed, so he can actually use two, um, whatchamacallit, you see like right here he rolled a 0, 1, 5, 5, and 9. Normally, uh, or by default, you know, he can use a rank 1, uh, he can use a single die to attack, and if you, he, he's entitled a bonus action if he uses the 25, because you need at least a 2 set for a bonus action. If he really wants to, he can use, you know, since he's unarmed, two single ones, and then, boom, the two fives for a third attack. But what's the rush, you know? So, seeing that everyone is going, everyone is going against everyone, um... He's going to chill out, and he's actually, he's going to watch the people fight each other, and um, Tristan does not engage with the other prisoners. And he stores the two fives into his focus slots. He currently has zero and nine in his effort pool now. Okay, um, how many prisoners... Well, actually, how likely is it that the prison... that at least one prisoner will go for Tristan? So, I think it's very likely. So, we'll go with like 75%. So I'm going to grab 2d10s here, and read them from left to right. Bam, 75. Okay. At least one. So what I'm going to do is roll a d10. 
Um, if I get 1 through 7, then 1 through 7 prisoners will go after Tristan. And 8, a 9, and a, and a 0, <clears throat> none of them go after him. Well, actually, at least one of them does. So, 0, 1, 8, 9, one of them does. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's how many other people go. So, I'm going to roll d10, boom, one of them does, okay. We'll save that one for later. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, let's see. Uh, the seven goes for the five, so he kills him. Um, or actually, so what I'm going to do is. Here's going to be prisoner A, B, C, D, E, and whatever. B, C, what the fuck? No. What the fuck, man? God, fucking office online. E F G. All right. So Prisoner G <laughs> deals seven damage to Prisoner A. Uh, let's see, Prisoner F deals. Hmm. Let's say F and G. We kind of buddy up. Deals seven damage to prisoner A. Killing prisoner A. Prisoner E deals two damage to prisoner C. Let's see. Let's see. Retaliates and kills prisoner E because E used his die in order to attack and not defend. Well, actually, no, you can't retaliate. Okay, so G damages A. Um, then F deals 17 points of damage to prisoner A, killing him. Okay, so A doesn't get to act. Or A acted and he's dead. And then E damage deals 2 points. Okay, because C defended. Let me make a note of that there, because A defended. All part of the learning process. D and B have not acted. So, prisoner D, we'll say he's the guy that attacks Tristan. Tristan, but Tristan uses a nine to block, taking no damage. Prisoner B, 
capitalizes and deals 12 damage to prisoner D, killing him. All right, so that's that. Uh, recovery. Uh, no recovery needed because no piranha was spent. Actually, hold on a second, hold on. I messed up somewhere. Let's not engage with the other prisoners. Okay, end of round. The focus slots, that's a thing I gotta remember. That's the thing to keep in mind. Um, it's at the end of the round where you get any remaining dice and you can store them in focus slots if you want. So that's what Tristan does. Okay, uh, let me copy paste all this. Why does it do that? This is an easier way. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so round two, Tristan and the remaining, uh, let's see, A is dead, and D is dead, so the remaining five Okay, no one has imbalances. They roll for initiative again. No A. And no D. Prisoners F and G seem to have teamed up. All right, Tristan and the prisoners. We roll. Oof, okay, okay. Uh, this time Tristan rolls to zero. And the prisoners rolled the five. So the five. What the fuck? Whatever. The five prisoners. Now I roll effort. Tristan rolls his five dice. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> zero, 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 five, seven. The five prisoners roll. Let's see these five roll. 
One, two, three, four, five. Five, six. Okay, so B is a zero. C is the five. E is the six. F is the two. G is the three. Initiative bid. Okay, um, let's do something cool. See if I can pull this off. Uh, uh, let's see if with Tristan, what I want to do is take out all these, all five of these guys at once. So how will I do that? I have, I actually have a total of three fives, three zeros, and a seven. So I can split that off into, let's see, I can also do two zeros, two fives, so those are two bonus actions. I'm unarmed, so I can use another zero and a five. or rather a seven and a five. So that's four attacks that I can do without using martial arts. So I essentially need to, um, I'm gonna try grass cutting attack, which it lets me roll 3d tens and rolling the resulting facings may empower any attack or defense with a balanced weapon. Fuck, I don't have a balanced weapon. <sighs> okay. And let's see, Blade in the Master's Hand. Any weapon you can reasonably improvise as a sword effectively becomes one when you wield it. My hands are not swords. Let's see, you may add the powers of any other weapon type to balance, no. Grant any non-magical defense, counterattack for two prana. Uh, you must have a balanced weapon, no. So basically for Blade of the Master's Hand, I need a sword in order, I need a balanced weapon in order for it to do anything. Uh, what he will do. He's act since he doesn't have the initiative. Man, that's the thing. Zeros, two fives, All right? Well, they act first, so we'll see what happens. <coughs> Uh, 
five prisoners act first. All right. Um, do any of them go for Tristan? Or rather, how many go for Tristan? Let's see. Or let me see if the two, if F and G go for Tristan. I'd say 50-50. 09. Yes. So, yeah, F and G, they rolled a 2 and a 3. So, what Tristan will do is, um, he's going to use the five that he has, okay, so, yeah, prisoner F, or prisoner G, attacks Tristan, but Tristan blocks with, okay, with a 13, but Tristan blocks with a 15, taking no damage. Prisoner F attacks Tristan with a 12, but Tristan blocks with uses one of the actually no. All right. I'll go on for a little bit longer, you know, until like the end of this fight. Uses the a 17 to block, taking no damage. Okay. <clears throat> and then there's B, C, and E. Prisoner. How much damage has Prisoner B taken? None. How about C? C's taken two damage. Prisoner E attacks Prisoner C with a 16. But prisoner C blocks with a 15, taking one damage. Then we have the capitalizer. <laughs> prisoner B capitalizes and deals 10 damage to. Prisoner E, who is unable to defend, killing him. So yeah, he just comes back at him, comes to his back like a crazy fucker, and just like snaps his neck. He's like, ha ha, that's two, <laughs> killing him. Okay, and now it's Tristan's turn. Tristan. I know what he'll do. Attacks prisoner F with a 10. And prisoner F has no more dice to use. So you know, for Prisoner F, Tristan, he just does an open hand strike to his throat, and he breaks his uh, windpipe, and he's on the floor, Going, he's going to die. He deals 10 damage, breaking his windpipe 
with a dagger hand strike. Uh, Tristan uses his second unarmed attack. against Prisoner G in the same manner using his other 10 dealing 10 points of damage to him leaving him dying on the floor Okay. Tristan then uses both of his his two fives from his focus slots <coughs> to make a bonus attack and kills <laughs> prisoner B. Well, yeah, he does kill him. Against prisoner B with a 25. So, after doing that, uh, Tristan notices, you know, this guy who's a sneaky fucker, and um, he does this like backflip like 20 feet like across the air and then like he lands with like a double handed a double um handed hammer strike over his head and he just like shatters his fucking spine his spine with a double handed hammer strike over his head as he lands from a prodigious yeah, backflip. And uh, that's it, everyone's acted. Um, Where's recovery? Recovery. No prana was spent. End of round. Tristan takes the remaining zero and puts it a focus slot. All right, so that's round two. It's just um, we were five guys. One was killed. Tristan kills three more. <sighs> okay. Round three. begins. Tristan and the last remaining Hippodrome prisoner 
are facing off. <laughs> As a zero one for this slot. Balances, you know, has imbalances. All effort. Initiative bid. All right. So next, yeah. So it's just Tristan and this one unfortunate sap. Uh, imbalance decision. No one has imbalances, so no decisions to be made. A roll an initiative. A D10 roll. Okay, Tristan rolls a 7, and the prisoner rolls a 2. Tristan goes first. Roll effort. Zero, two, four, six, nine. Then rolls a zero, two, four, six, and nine. The prisoner rolls a zero. Man, what a fucking poor sap. <sighs> initiative bid. No one is bidding for initiative. Turns. Right? Um, Tristan, he's looking around, you know, onto the crowd, and they're like, yeah, kill him, kill him, kill him. And um, he's actually extremely unsatisfied because he's fighting a bunch of weaklings. Um, and then he tells the prisoner, you're the only one left. You're not a challenge. And I'm not going to sully my hands by, um, you know, by killing you. So, just stand down. Let's see here. Refusing a challenge you deem below. Refusing to engage in challenge you deem below your standing, willingly using less than your full power. SFO. Okay. So, yeah, he's refusing to engage in challenge you deem. Okay. So. Tristan refuses to finish off the remaining prisoner, which is a negative trigger to his major dharma. And one Zui. Um, the prisoner, uh, you know, it's in that situation, you know, he's scared shitless. You know, there's a superior martial artist that's just wiping the floor with everyone. And um, he, he's like, please spare my life. Now, the question I ask is if 
the announcer is going to basically declare the match over or if she says it's not over until there's one man standing okay so if you're gonna go that route you know it's not over until one man standing um, I don't know 50 50 yep <laughs> Um, and Tristan, he just looks at her and he's just nodding his head, no, no from side to side, like, mm -mm. now does she threaten him with, if you don't do it, then you're disqualified, and you don't advance to the next round, I'm not so sure, I'd say that's somewhat unlikely, so 35% or less. 43. No. Okay. So, if she doesn't stoop down to that level. And, um, well, it seems we have a man who has standards here. You know, our intrepid martial artists. You know, seeing as uh, the remaining prisoner refuses to, to fight, we'll declare him the winner! And he's like, ah! Or are they booing or are they cheering? Are they booing? Um, oh, it seems pretty like a pretty entertaining fight so far. So I'd say unlikely. So 25% or less that they're booing. 35. No. So they're cheering. Like, ah! And, um, what you call it? Let's just fill that in. Despite being told by the lady announcer that it's a it's a last man standing fight, Tristan refuses engage with a weaker foe. With that said. The announcer declares Tristan the winner of the first round of the Hippodrome. The crowd cheers for Tristan as he put on a very entertaining performance. Tristan is then led back to his cell. Um, expressing his disappointment that he thought he was going to face a worthy opponent. Let's uh, get this list here. Put it there. Email Hippodrome announcer. And, um, last prisoner standing in round one's free for all. Spared prisoner. All right, so we went over the hour because it wasn't an appropriate time to uh, conclude the episode, but we did finish the scene, and that was scene six. 
Now, we actually managed to do two scenes today, because scene five was pretty damn short. So let me just set it up for scene six. Okay, so scene six I will most likely do Sunday, so that's two days from now. If not Sunday, then Monday. All right, take care, and um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, uh, please, you know, I would love to hear your comments. You know, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. And um, until next time.